I'm Randy Schrader. I want to thank you for spending the next few minutes with me. And I have to tell you that whether I'm speaking in front of large crowds or whether I'm speaking in front of a microphone, I very, very, very seldom have any even little hint of nerves. And right now I do. Why? Because this is so critically important. The skill of learning how to invite is everything. There are people in this industry who've become dramatically successful. I know many of them, if not most of them. And if there's one single common recurring theme, it is that within the context of his or her personality, they have each learned how to invite. They have all learned how to be a conduit to the system. Every person who becomes dramatically successful in this network marketing industry is a person who has learned how to influence others in a short handful of words to cause them to begin engaging in a series of activities that allow them to say yes to the particular business venture. And as I move forward in this short discussion of how to invite, I want to, first of all, give acknowledgments to those people who taught me. And those people are people of profound success in the industry. It's Nathan Ricks and Todd Smith. These are two people who, in my estimation, have mastered the art of inviting. And it's these two people who have taught me how to invite. And my greatest goal and objective would be that I would be able to somehow transfer to you knowledge that I gained from them many, many years ago in my career, and that I might then be able to add a little bit of my own unique content. I can add some of my own life experiences so that why? So that I can help you not waste time, not waste effort, not waste energy, not waste money. My simple objective is this. It's that you your decision to become involved with Bonavit winds up being among the most important decisions ever in your financial and personal career and lives. Now, there are really a series of skills that are required to succeed in this business. And those skills are number one, learning how to create and maintain a candidate list or list creation. It's an activity to write down a list of names. It's a skill to have that list constantly growing in front of you. Second, in order, but first in terms of importance is the skill of learning how to invite. Third is developing presentation skills. And by the way, don't get frightened. Some people get a little bit intimidated with that idea. Within the context of your own personality, we're going to teach you how to use tools, how to be as much of you personally as you want it to be, or as little of you personally as you want it to be. You can one day become the person actually delivering the information, or you can simply be a tour guide, as I describe it, pointing people to the various tools in the process. But first is the skill of learning how to create and maintain a candidate list. Second is learning how to invite. Third is to develop within the context of your personality presentation skills. Next, of course, comes the simple act of enrolling. And I include that as a skill simply because so many people join us in this business, in this industry, who have never before had to ask someone for an order. They've never come to that point where they say, okay, now it's time to take action. So I think there is a skill in actually going through the enrollment process and then having taken all of those steps. If we start with list creation and maintenance, and then we learn how to invite so that our candidate sees what the message really is, that we then present the business Then we develop the skill of enrolling. Now we simply learn how to train. We teach another person how to do those same things. And that's it. In a short form, those are the skills that are required to really succeed in Montevideo. And so now here's the primary question. Why do I place such importance on this skill of learning how to invite? Why would I call it the single most important skill? It is simply because... In my entire life experience in this industry, I've determined that there are no new mistakes. There are new people making old mistakes. There are old people making old mistakes. And when we deliver information beyond the minimum required to provoke proper curiosity, to cause our candidate to take the next proposed step in this pattern of activities that we'll describe, then every additional word that we say beyond the minimum reduces our effectiveness. When I say there are no new mistakes, there are new people making old mistakes and old people making old mistakes, the most common mistake is simply talking too much. Remember that the primary message, the primary methodology of our business will be learning how to invite so that we can let a tool talk or so that we can let the process work for us. And you know, here I find myself walking along a fairly thin line because I remember in the earliest days when I was first introduced to the network marketing industry, at that point in time, the principal methodology was to invite people to an event where the person would arrive having no idea why. And I think of one of the great companies in the industry. But you know, there came a time when literally everybody in the United United States and many places in the world had decided in advance they didn't want to get involved with that company. Why? Because there were so many instances when they thought they were arriving at a barbecue, they thought they were arriving at a social function, and there stood somebody with a whiteboard about to start drawing circles and X's and O's, and they found out that it was network or multi-level marketing in the discussion. In fact, so negative was the overall mindset that ultimately the company had to reformulate itself with a different name because people had all decided that they weren't going to get involved with that company. 
And so I look at that experience and I consider the fact that so many people decided in advance they didn't want to get involved because of what they perceived as a deceptive practice where people were invited knowing absolutely nothing. And then I balance that against the fact that as difficult an environment as that developed into, that company nevertheless has gone on to achieve greater success, greater long-term success. They've done more billions of dollars in volume than anybody else. So I consider that. And then on the flip side of it, I consider the typical network marketing environment where a person just tells them, gosh, this is what I'm doing. It's a multi-level marketing company. And the candidate automatically says, no, well, somewhere in between these two, somewhere in between telling people nothing and telling them too much is what is correct. And those who develop the skill of inviting so that we deliver just enough information to provoke curiosity, just enough information to cause the candidate to take the desired step. And that desired step may be to listen to an audio file. It may be to watch a DVD. The desired step may be to come to a home business review. The desired step may be to participate in a web-based training session. Whatever the required step is, when one properly develops the skill of learning how to invite, then we can have confidence that our candidate will make a decision based on the correct information as opposed to being based upon preconceived notions. So why learn to invite? It is the single most important skill. When I said at the very beginning of this discussion that my objective was to help you not waste time, not waste effort, not waste energy, not waste money, there is nothing that is more important in that overall context than helping you learn how to invite. Why learn how to invite at the end of the day? Because it will help you make more money more quickly. And if you can then guide others into a similar process where they learn how to invite, now your income can take on a life of its own because it's predicated not only upon your own proficiency and skill, but it's now a replicating process. One of the things that I find intriguing, I travel a lot around the world multinationally, and oftentimes I'm in environments where I don't speak the language. And sometimes my translators do a really, really good job. And sometimes I can tell those people doing the translation don't do a really good job. There have actually been times when I've had the translator just stop and say, give it up. I can see it's not working for you. A person can see in me what they need to see, even though they don't understand the words. What's that about? You see, it's the way that I present myself when a person listens to me. My guess is right now when you listen to me, you know I really believe what I'm saying has value to you. You're probably not thinking, oh gosh, I wonder what Randy really thinks. You probably have a pretty good sense that I have absolute total conviction that what I'm telling you is of great value to you and for you. And by the way, that was an important thought I just said. Great value to you and for you. If I'm concerned about value for me, I will have a certain level of effectiveness. If I'm concerned about value for you, I will have a far greater degree of effectiveness. And so just keep that in your own mind. Whenever you're engaging in any part of this process, are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for another? As soon as you can transition into the environment where what you're doing really and truly and no kidding is for someone else, the rules of the cosmos bend so that your own effectiveness goes up when you're doing it for and on behalf of another, as opposed to doing it for on behalf of yourself. So now, here's a question. Is inviting more about words or is it more about attitude? Is it more about the specific script or is it about intonation? Is it about the list of words or is it about the energy that one has when they say those words? Is it about the way that one articulates the words or is it about the confidence that one has in the words? See, I really believe that it is not so very important. People say, well, gosh, Randy, will you write out a group of scripts for me? Sure, I can write out a group of scripts. We'll have all kinds of scripts available on the site. But you know what? Those people who are most effective will not be those who memorize the correct words. It will be those who join Join me in a deep-seated belief that what we're doing is offering great value to other people. And then when we say those words, they'll be said with such confidence, such conviction, such joy, there will be an effervescence to it that it will cause people to know, hey, he or she's got something for me. So the question is, is inviting more about words or is it more about attitude? My opinion is that it's more about attitude. It's more about confidence. It's more about true belief that we're doing something for another. And here's the next question. Is inviting a skill that can be learned? The answer, absolutely and emphatically, yes. Cicero correctly stated so many years ago, the skill to do comes from the doing. Now, I'm hoping that you listen to this CD, this audio file, again and again and again and again. And you know what? That will cause some of these scripts to get submitted in your mind. I hope you'll start to have some of the same belief that I have about the effectiveness of the process. I hope you'll begin to really believe that you're doing something for others. But ultimately, the skill to do comes from the doing. You can listen to me talk forever and you'll gather some knowledge, but you won't develop a skill until you begin to engage in it. Is inviting a skill that can be developed? Yes, the words can be learned. The skill can be developed. And this skill can be developed by you as an individual. I want you to know that. This is not generic. This is targeted for you specifically as an individual. 
Okay, so I think back at my whole experience in network marketing and I contemplate that very first environment where I thought I was going to a barbecue and instead of uh, roasted chicken, what did I find? I found a person standing there with a whiteboard and I learned it was a network marketing discussion and I was resentful. Somewhere in between that idea of delivering information, delivering no information, what I felt was misleading, what I felt was deceptive, somewhere in between there and just telling a person everything about the business is the correct methodology. Now, my simple thought has always been this. I only want to talk to people who want to talk to me. Now, I have to tell you that I've been at this for a long enough period of time. I have this simple thought, and I hope that you can one day embrace this thought. The way that I view it is that right now it's as bad as it can possibly get. I have a candidate, and the candidate's not in the business. For example, Carrie is here helping me with this session, and Carrie's not in my business. Well, if I invite Carrie to look at the business and she doesn't join me, things did not get worse. They stayed the same as they are. The way that I view it, things cannot get worse. They can only get better. The candidate's already not involved. And so that's my simple mindset. Things can only improve. They can cannot get worse. Now, honestly, I have a pretty thick skin. If the next 100 people in a row that I talked to about the business said, oh my gosh, no, Randy, I don't want to do that. And I think you're nuts for doing it. You know what? I would with a smile on my face and a song in my heart, go on to candidate number 101. That's the way that I am constructed. I know that that's not the way that a lot of people are constructed. And so with that simple thought in mind, I only want to talk to people who want to talk to me of greater importance really is I only want you to talk to people who want to talk to you. I want you to know you can engage in a process where you need never suffer rejection. I think that's one of the things that stops people from really moving forward in our business. It's this fear that so many people have of being rejected. I think you can get completely in front of that. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll teach you how to invite to let a tool talk as we talk about the various kinds of invitations we might have. And uh, what kind of a tool might we have? Well, first of all, an audio file. And so, uh, you know, my wife Tara is sitting over here. She's watching me and her eyes are filled with love and joy as she views me here. <laughs> so I see Tara and I imagine that if Tara was a candidate, it's a real simple thing. We have an audio file and that audio file is called Your First Look. Well, it's very, very easy for me to put that audio file in someone's hands because I know that when we depart this little session, she'll be getting in a car and she'll be driving. It is so easy for me to ask a person to listen to an audio file. Why? Because I'm not borrowing time from them. I'm helping that person take advantage of underutilized time, perhaps of completely wasted time. The second reason that I've always enjoyed audio distribution of information is because it's the only method of information delivery that does not require sacrifice of time and it's the only method is likely to get multiple play. If that little audio file at 11 or 12 minutes long makes sense, if she has a 20 minute drive, she'll listen to it twice. And so a simple invitation to let a tool talk is simply this at the end of a luncheon or as we are departing from the office at the end of a day or when we're leaving the soccer field after the kids have played the game or when we're leaving church or whatever the interaction was is, hey Tara, I have here some really, really important information. This is information that I think could positively impact you and your family. If I hand you this CD, Tara, it's called your first look. If I hand you the CD, can you listen to it on your drive home? That's how easy it was. That's the way that a person gets their eyes open to this idea of Monavi. You see, I didn't ask her to sacrifice any time. I didn't ask her to make a big commitment. I simply said, Tara, I found something here that's really intriguing. This could be great for you and I together. If I hand you this CD, Tara, can you listen to it during your drive home? It's just that simple. Great. Are you going to have a few minutes later on this evening where I can call you back? Now, notice that second part of the invitation was very, very important. If I don't say, great, Tara, are you going to have some time this evening when I can call you back? If I don't make an arrangement for a time when I'm going to call back, then what I want you to do is this. We make these tools available for a very, very inexpensive cost, but it still costs something. Let's say that that audio file costs you a buck and a half. Well, if you don't make that follow-up statement, Tara, is there a time this evening when I can call you back so we can discuss what this might mean to you and I together? If you don't make that follow-up discussion, then what I want you to do is I want you to drive down the highway tonight. I want you to roll down the window and I want you to throw out a dollar and 50 cents because that's the same thing that happens when you hand somebody an audio file or when you email them an audio file, when you do anything that does not result in a specific time for callback. Tara, can I give you a call at around 6.30 to find out if this made the same kind of sense to you that it made to me? Now notice, I didn't tell them what Monavi was. I didn't say this is network marketing. This is not network marketing. All I said was, Tara, if I give you this audio file, it contains information that I think is really important. It could be important to you and to me. Could you listen to it on your way home? That was it. That's a really simple invitation. Now we can broaden that invitation just a little bit. 
as we contemplate what makes an invitation effective. What makes an invitation effective is, first of all, the tone of voice, the certainty, the confidence. Remember, I believe this. It's not so much about the words as it is about the attitude that we have when we express the words. It also becomes really, really helpful if I make a sincere compliment to the individual. And so now, Tara, I have observed that you have a caring and loving and a warm, compassionate attitude that draws others to you. If I could show you a way to turn that into benefit for your family and for theirs, would you be willing to listen to a 10-minute audio? Now, you see, as soon as one makes that compliment, which must be sincere, now the eyes are open to another degree. What makes an invitation effective? Preparation. I know what I will say. More importantly, I know what I will not say. I know that it will be short and concise, and that the specific intention of this invitation is to let the tool do the talking. Now, this is the key. Over the course of my whole career in network marketing, the debate rages on about this idea of duplication. And I want you to understand that we must have a duplicatable process. And I assure you, at Montevi International, at a higher level than ever before in my career, we have created a process that will duplicate. Every step leads to the next correct step. And it will duplicate for you if you simply get yourself on board. So there must be a replicatable process. But just as you now listen to this audio right now, this audio is borrowing from my years of experience years and years and years of experience. Is this skill duplicatable? Maybe someday, one day, but not overnight. And so what we do is we search for people who have special skills. We then make those skills available to as many others as is possible by letting a tool talk. So we don't replicate personality. I remember years ago when I first got involved in the network marketing industry, one of the greatest speakers then and still today is a guy named Craig Bryson. And uh, we kept hearing him talk about duplication and duplication and duplication. And, and uh, there was a young person in the room who's gone on to big success in the industry. His name was Alan. And I saw Alan take duplication at a different level than I ever would. I met Alan two or three years later as he had grown in business in the career. And he had adopted all of Craig's personal mannerisms. He sounded exactly like Craig. He had fallen into the trap, I think, of duplicating not a process, but of trying to duplicate a personality. We develop a replicatable process where you can use the special spark that is you within that process. And we develop simple scripts to do what? To let a tool talk. So invitation to an audio file. Tara, I have observed, I have seen in you, Tara, a special ability to draw other people to you. If I could show you how to turn that skill into greater value for you, for your family, and the families of those people you care about, would you be willing to invest 15 minutes listening to this CD as you drive home? Cool. Hey, can I give you a call at 6 tonight to find out if you see what I see? If so, I'd sure like to talk to you further. That's a properly constructed script. It is short. It is concise. There's proper energy. It complemented. Set a time for callback. That's a properly constructed script. Now, what I just did is worth a few million dollars to somebody. Is it worth a few million dollars to you? I don't know. Are you going to practice it? Are you going to try? Are you going to do what I'm doing right now? I'm standing talking in front of a microphone. I'm not talking to a real life person right now. I'm talking to a mic. Are you willing to do what I'm doing right now and listen to yourself and then ask when you listen to it? Wow. If I heard those exact words, if I heard those words with that tone of voice, if I heard those words with that level of confidence, conviction, and enthusiasm, would I take that action? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then I need to go back and practice some more. Practice. The skill to do comes from the doing. Okay. Let's invite then to the CD. The audio file that I want you to use is called Your First Look at Monavi. I want you to know that there is nothing, exactly nothing that I'm doing, that we're doing in this leadership hierarchy, that is by happenstance or that is by accident. Every single thing that I teach you is either born of some past success or of some past failure or a combination of the two. I want you to know there is a proven and predictable pattern of activities. There is no luck. There is no guesswork. If A, then B, then C, then D. What do we do? We learn how to create and maintain a candidate list. We learn how to invite. Having learned how to invite, now what happens? The tool talks, and once the tool talks, that grants us the opportunity to take the next step into a home business review and so on. Now, is it possible that we may sometimes skip past that very first introduction? Remember, I only want to talk to people who want to talk to me. And I only want you to talk to people who want to talk to you. I don't want someone to come to a home business review and find out only upon arrival that it's a business discussion. And we develop simple scripts to do what? To let a tool talk. So Tara listened to a CD on the way home and I told her I'd call her at 6.30. So I called her back, Tara, did you listen to the CD? Now this is a real simple question. When I call back, I know what I will say. I know what I will say. It's this way. Tara, did you listen to the CD? That's what I say. There can only be one of two answers. Yes, I did, or no, I did not. If the answer is no, I did not, I say, really? 
Tara, the information contained there is so important to you and to me. It is so important. I'm having a special function at my house in just a couple of nights. I'd like to invite you to participate, but I cannot until you've listened to that material. Can you listen to it tomorrow morning on the way to the office? Can I give you a call at lunch? Now, I call back. Tara, did you listen? And if the answer is no, I move on. Because why? Because I'm looking for people who are looking. If she did listen, Tara, did you listen to the CD? Yes, I did. Great. Did it make any sense to you? Well, gosh, Randy, yeah, it made some sense. I have these questions. You know what, Tara? I want so much for you to see this for what it is that I'm not even going to try to explain it over the telephone, but I will tell you that I'm having a special presentation at my home on Tuesday night. I'm only inviting 10 people, but I've got a seat at the table for you. I want you to see with clarity what Monavie could be for you. I want you to see with clarity what this could mean to you and I together. Can I count on you being there at seven o'clock sharp? Now, if Tara says, Randy, I'm going to try to be there. What she just said was, Randy, I'm not coming. If she says, I think I can come. What she said was, Randy, I will not be there. If she says, Randy, I'm 90% sure I will come. What she said was, Randy, I'm not coming. If she said, Randy, I will be there no matter what. I have carved it in my thigh. Then there's a 50-50 chance she will show up. I want you to understand that if there's a single issue in the whole network marketing industry that slows more people down, it's that they consider that if a person does not come when they've told them they would come, they find that to be so disappointing. Folks, understand this. We can't change human nature. Do most people that you know accomplish great things in life? Do most? I mean, we can. That. Do most people you know accomplish great things in life? Most people that I know don't accomplish great things in life. Why? Because most people don't develop the disciplines that are required to really succeed. You're going to interact with people who developed all kinds of behaviors, and some of them are great and some of them are not. I've learned never to be surprised, and I have learned that if I want to have a successful home business presentation, and that suggests that I've got seven qualified candidates there, what's a qualified candidate for me? It's one that's listened to that audio tool in front, or one that's been to a website, or whatever the invited preliminary information device tool was. If I want to have a successful event with seven qualified candidates in the room, I've got to have 14 qualified candidates who have said, yes, Randy, absolutely, I will be there. Yes, I've put it in my book. I know it starts at 7.15, so I'll be there at 7 o'clock sharp. If I've got two to one who have told me they'll be there, then I know I'll have a successful event. Okay, how might I invite to a DVD? To a DVD, it's a little bit different because it's not quite so immediate. The thing I love about audio files is that it can be immediate if I'm putting it in a person's hands right before drive time. A DVD is very simple. It's very similar, however. It's, Tara, tonight, will you have 15 minutes that you could invest to really focus and pay attention to some content that I think could be critically important to you and to me. You're going to learn about a company. You're going to learn about a product. You're going to learn about an opportunity that I think has enormous value to you and to me. Can you invest 15 minutes with a clear thought tonight? Great. Can I call you at 9.30? Something like this. It's important that we separate time. And once again, if we don't have a specific moment when we're going to call back, then it was as though we drove down the road and we threw the money out. Now, some of you have been involved in the network marketing industry. And for those of you who've not been in the industry, I don't want any of this content to be at all discouraging. But at the same time, I want to have absolute full disclosure. Those of you who've been involved in the industry, have you ever been in a hotel environment where there was to be a presentation that night? And have you seen the people standing out in the lobby? They're called lobby cranes. They're standing there in the lobby and they're craning their neck from the left to the right. And then they go out on the front door and they're craning their neck from the left to the right. And they're looking for their candidates that they just know are coming. In a home business presentation, instead of lobby cranes, you know, these are doorstep cranes because they're standing out on the front doorstep and they're craning their neck back and forth and they're looking for those candidates that they just know are coming. As soon as you have observed a lobby crane or as soon as you have observed a doorstep crane, then you'll understand. These are people who have not developed and mastered the art of inviting. Once you have developed and mastered the art of inviting, then you will know who's going to come and you will know who is not going to come. And so now, my simple invitation to listen to a tool talk is the easiest one because it requires no sacrifice of time. When a person has listened to the tool, now I call back, Tara, did you listen to the CD? Yes, I did. Did it make any sense? Yes, but I have questions. Of course you do. I would not begin to do this opportunity, the injustice of trying to answer it over the telephone now. But Tara, I'm having a special presentation at my home on Tuesday night. I want you to see, touch, taste, and feel this product. Because now, as you know, having listened to that CD, Monavi is a company and Monavi is a product. And I want you to see the opportunity for what it is, and I want you to 
understand the product for what it is. I've got a special place at the table for you on Tuesday night. Can you be there, Tara? Can I count on your attendance? I only have 10 spaces. Can I count on you being there? And then I'm going to call her back on Monday and I'm going to say, Tara, just very quickly, I'm just calling to reconfirm. As you know, I've only got 10 seats and I've got you in a very prominent place around the table. Tara, I'm so eager to get your uh, thoughts and insight after you see what this really is. Can I count on you being there tomorrow night, Tara? That's it. Now, folks, if you will actually take that step, you will never be that person standing on the step being a porch crane. And you will never be a lobby crane because you will have developed the art of inviting. That's the way that it works. Now, how would I invite if I were referring someone to a website? I do this very frequently. You know, the simple tools of Monavie. There are a variety of ways to have this introductory look at the business. One is to use an audio file, and that audio file can be personally put in somebody's hands in the form of a CD. It can be an emailed link, and that emailed link can be an audio link, or that emailed link can be a video link. Now, if I'm going to email someone a link, now how do I do it? Now I call and I say, Carrie, are you by your computer right now, Carrie? Great, I'm going to send you an email. I want to make sure that you receive it and that it opens correctly for you. Carrie, I'm sending it to you right now. Tell me when it comes in. Comes in. Carrie, that video file I have just sent to you is of critical importance to you and to me. I believe that the combination of skills and life experiences that you have could be critically important in this venture. Now, notice that was a script once again, and I never would use a script like that if it's not entirely accurate. Every script that I use is entirely accurate. If Carrie doesn't have a set of life experience and skills, that would make this an obvious choice for her. Then I would create a script that is appropriate for Carrie. What if Carrie has not yet had her first business experience? Well, the script would be quite different. Carrie, are you by your computer right now? Great, I'm gonna send you this email and I wanna wait and make sure it opens appropriately for you. Carrie, I know that you've been an employee for all of your life. And I remember at the party we were at last Saturday, you talked about the fact that the job insecurity was just wearing you out. You talked about the possibility of entrepreneurship. Carrie, this could be the answer. Can you review the file that is there before you and what is an appropriate time for me to call back? My script will always be appropriate for the person. My script will always be absolutely correct within the context of relationship. For example, I would not use the same words, the same tone. I wouldn't address my brother the same way that I would address someone who works for me. I would certainly not use the very same words and tone with someone who is superior to me in an organization as I would to someone who is subordinate to me in an organization. And so now you get a chance to prove to yourself the breadth and strength of your desire and of your willingness. And by the way, I'm hoping very much that you embrace this concept and that you take it a long ways. And if you do, you will soon have a compensation plan designation of a diamond and then of a blue diamond and so on. And I love these uses of gemstones. Why? Because each of those diamonds has surfaces that reflect brilliance. And every one of those surfaces that reflect brilliance is what is a facet. Well, there are certain facets of becoming a diamond. One of those facets is desire. And so now having gone through a few of these scripts, my first question to you is this. Do you have a big enough desire to right now actually take pen to paper? See, by the time you're reviewing this file, you should already have gone through the exercise of creating a candidate list. And so now you should have a candidate list at least 100 strong. And on that candidate list, there'll be a variety of personalities and a variety of relationships. Now, what I want you to do is take that candidate list and compare it to the invitation scripts that are a PDF downloadable file here on the site. And now determine which of these scripts would be appropriate for this relationship. And by the way, don't feel like you're married to those scripts. You need not be. It can be your words, not mine. Those scripts are simply created as an idea, as a possibility. Remember, it is appropriate to replicate a process. One should never attempt to replicate a personality. For example, so many of my scripts are born of my life experience. So many of my scripts are born of my personality. Your scripts need to be born of your life experience and of your personality. They may wind up being very close to mine. They might be a little bit different. The thing that is critical and that is key is that you believe in your heart of hearts that you're doing something for someone and that you are prepared. Preparation implies what? Preparation implies practice. Who would be someone that uses a script? Well, it's an actor, it's an actress. Do you suppose they step on stage and go through their lines the first time without practicing? No, they practice and then they have critique and there's a director and there's other people in the presentation. They tell them how they could improve. That's the same thing that your upline, that your sponsorship group, that all those people who have a vested interest in your success personally and financially would like to do with you. Okay.
So now, if I'm going to invite to a website, once again, immediacy is everything. Tara, are you by your computer right now? I want to make sure you get this URL correctly, and so I'm sending you a link. I want you to click on it. When you click on it, Tara, you're going to be clicking on an organization called Monavi. And I want to refer you specifically to the site that I'd like you to see. And once again, that's it. See, I'm taking control of the situation. Tara, are you by your computer right now? Great. I want to send you a link because I want you to get the URL exactly correctly. And Tara, there's some information here that it's important for you and I that you review right now. Tara, can you spend a few minutes and review this following video file? Tara, can you spend a few minutes and review this audio file? Is there a time this evening that would be appropriate for me to call you back? Because I want to describe to you a special experience we're going to be having sometime in the next seven or eight days. And Tara, I'd really like you to be a part of it. What time can I call? Now, there's not one of these scripts that I have used in this little presentation that has been as long as a minute. Not one of them has been as long as a minute. The vast majority have been measured in 20 seconds or less. It's interesting to me that I observe so many people whose scripts become a book. A script should not be a book, folks. A script should be something less than a short paragraph. That's it. A properly constructed script is short. It's concise. It has proper energy and emotion. It's important that the content of the script would be appropriate for the relationship, and it would be appropriate factually. Remember that if the person is a teacher, I'm not going to say, your sales skills have served you so well over your life. No, it's going to be appropriate based upon what that person's life experience has been, what my understanding is of that life experience. Now, I want to give you a couple more quick examples. What if I'm simply in an environment and the talk of the day is the meltdown of the entire global financial system? And because there's so much discussion, that is exactly as though somebody was just saying, here, Randy, here is the key, stick it in the lock. Because now we have a great chance to use a properly constructed script. And it's simply this, well, Tara, if I could show you a way to turn this economic malaise to personal profit and to benefit others, would you be interested? If, Tara, I could show you a way to turn this global financial meltdown into a moment of positive experience instead of negative, if I could show you a way to take the fear out of your life and out of the lives of other people, would you be interested? As it works out, I have found a company and an opportunity that does just that. So the economy right now, uh, while I have so much compassion for people who are being negatively impacted by this economic meltdown, the economy right now winds up being our great, great friend in this launching point of our business, in this launching point of your business. Next simple thought, my candidate list has constantly grown in front of me over these years just because I've developed the habit and the discipline of catching people doing something right. And if you'll just open your eyes to the fact that so many people do things well, open your eyes to that possibility and join me in this simple thought that when I catch someone doing something right. And by the way, I now give full credit to this idea of catching someone doing something right to the One Minute Manager, that beautiful book of Mr. Blanchard's, Catch Someone Doing Something Right. Every time I catch someone doing something right, I say, wow, you are underemployed. Wow, your skills are over the top for what you're doing. Wow, you could accomplish so much in my business because of your energy, your spark, your smile, your effectiveness, your efficiency. Whenever I catch someone doing something right, I am prepared with a simple script. Now, I don't walk around the world with my pockets bulging with with audio tapes and videotapes, but my eyes are open and I simply ask you to let your eyes be open to the possibility that in the next two or three hours, you're going to catch someone doing something right. And by the way, do you suppose your whole life will start to change a little bit if you join me in the thought that today I'm going to catch people doing something right instead of, as I so often observe out on the highways as people are driving, people seem to be watching to catch others doing something wrong and letting them know about it. Well, I've made it a discipline of mine that I will catch people doing something really well and I'll positively affirm them for it. I'll compliment it. That simple thought causes my circle of influence to stay in front of me always. And it's so easy to call back later and say, you know, I don't even remember me, but you sold me a suit. And you were so good. I told you how great you were. And I promised you I'd give you a call back and let you know a way that you could put those skills to higher and greater use. That simple thought, that simple process has caused a candidate list to stay in front of me forever. I think that it's also very, very important as we contemplate the proper construction of scripts that uh, we can be really, really well scripted. We can develop this skill to a high level. But if we spend all of our time talking to people whose accomplishments in life are small, then we should be surprised if they join us and they have great accomplishments here quickly. Now. I want to tell you that I take great, great, great joy when people who have not yet had financial success join us and have their first financial success here. And if you find yourself today laboring under extreme financial pressure, if you have not yet had your first breakthrough financial experience, I am so eager to be a part of that with you. But I also want us to apply some common sense. If we want to grow a big successful business, one of the things we must do is raise our sights. We need to be not looking down and not looking parallel. We need to be looking up. We need to be looking up for the best and the brightest and the strongest, most incredible people we've ever seen. 
because those past successes can transition into immediate successes here. And so I go both ways. And this is kind of a combination of thoughts on scripts and also thoughts on candidate lists. The first thing that I do is I reach up. I look up for the best, the brightest, the strongest, most extraordinary people. Because if a person's developed skills, real leadership skills elsewhere, those skills can be transferred into our business and assimilated so quickly. So the first thing I do is I reach up, and I have to coach people to do that. Most people don't reach up. I then reach out. I reach out to my natural peer group, and I encourage you to do the same thing. And then, earlier in my career, I didn't do this, but today I also reach down. I reach down to help those people who have not had their first success. Now, I believe it would be appropriate for each of us to create scripts that are appropriate for each of those types of relationships. So once again, as you look at your candidate list, who are those whose life successes so far are greater than yours? What would be a proper script for them? Write it down. If there's nothing you find in my scripts, put pen to paper, write it down, practice it, rehearse it. How about those people who are your natural peer group? What would be an appropriate script for them? Do you find it in my group of scripts? Great. If not, write it down, write it out, make it personal to you. And here's the key. The reason I ask you to write it down is because when you begin to write your scripts, you will shorten them. Write it down. And here, once again, you get to decide for yourself if your desire is great enough to become willing, to become willing to do what? To become willing to change basic attitudes and habits, to wipe clean the slate on every single thing you know, or more importantly, think you know about the network marketing industry. Become willing to change, change skills, change attitudes, change schedules, change behaviors and take action. That's the final facet at this stage of the game. A big enough desire to become willing to change and take action. And what is the action I want you to take? I want the action to be that you compare a group of scripts with your candidate list that you then rehearse. Now, let us not have this rehearsal turn into avoidance behavior. I want you to rehearse a script, compare the script to the candidate, and make three invitations today. Make three invitations today. And then remember this, that which is measured can be improved. Make three invitations today. And if three out of three people took the requested action, if three out of three listened to the CD, watched the DVD, went to the website, came to the HBR, great, you had a fantastic day. If two out of three did, that was also great. If one out of three did, your next call should be not to a candidate, but your next call should be to a microphone like me right now, rehearsing, practicing, getting better. Your single most important and precious asset right now is this candidate list. The key to your success, to your early success in the business is to become effective at inviting. So the candidate sees what this Monavi message really is. When they see the message for what it is, then they like me and like you will be compelled to take action. Now, I wish I could jump right through these airwaves, and I wish I could look you right straight in the eye. I wish I could shake your hand, and I wish I could just take you by the shoulders right now, shake you a little bit, and say, okay, listen, carefully. This is the key. Learn to invite. Learn to invite. Develop this inviting skill. The network marketing industry is absolutely perfect for the time. Within network marketing, there is not today, nor has there ever been, a company like Monavi. Ever. And within Monavi, you have the remarkable, the unbelievable chance to be a part of the foundation of the building of this business in your nation. Wow, that's a lot. Because there's so much opportunity, we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our candidate to learn how to effectively invite so that our candidate can see what Monavi really is. When they see it, they'll engage upon it and their success can be your success as well. I appreciate your commitment to join the business and I appreciate your willingness to learn and I'll see you soon. Not surprisingly, there are rules in our industry, and we, of course, comply with them entirely. Those rules require that we give you the following verbiage, simply stating that Monavi does not guarantee any level of income or earnings to a distributor. Earnings from the Monavi compensation plan depend completely on the sales and each distributor's skill, ability, and personal application. In other words, this is not a lottery. This is a business. It requires effort. It requires work. It requires the development of skills. I really encourage you to see the Monavi Income Disclosure Statement at www.monavi.com because there you'll find complete details regarding the earnings of Monavi distributors. And while this is a disclosure piece, I will tell you that I consider it to be an incredible marketing piece because you can there identify your own income need. You can find where that need is met in the compensation plan. You can then approach your upline, a tour guide, and say, what have I got to do to gain this rank so I can earn the incomes that are described on the Monavi Income Disclosure Statement? And please understand, that product purchase is not required to become a Monavi distributor and participation in the auto ship program is not required to be a distributor. Also, please understand that one need not acquire tools to become a distributor. These things that we do to facilitate your business, they're things that I personally believe will help your business. But understand, you don't have to purchase products to be a distributor. You don't have to be on auto ship and you don't have to buy sales tools. All of that said, get yourself on the bus. There's a seat for you. 
you might be wondering exactly who I am and what my affiliation is. You know, my name is Randy Schrader, and I have been a full-time participant in this network marketing industry for 20 years. I believe that 20 years ago, I was put in the top of a funnel, and for 20 years, I was working my way closer to the day when I would find the opportunity, which, of course, I now know to be Monavi. I became a Monavi distributor on August 28th of 2008. The next 52 weeks were, for me, a joy. I consider them to have been the most productive 52 weeks of my entire career. During that time, I became a black diamond, built a remarkable distributorship. And then my long, long, long-term friend, Dallin Larson, one of the founders, the CEO of Monavi, asked me if I I'd be willing to change my role. And the change that he asked was for me to stop being a distributor. At first, that was an uncomfortable thought. For the last 20 years, being a network marketing distributor is not just what I do, it's what I am. But Dallin said, Randy, I want your life experiences to impact all of the international development of Monavi, not just your business. Would you do it? And only because it was Dallin, I said yes. And so what is my role specifically? I am the international distributor ambassador. I am in partnership with you in the development of your Monavi business.